Hi everyone, welcome to Cap at Home. I'm Miss Rachel, and today I'm going to show you how to make this can portrait. So let's hop on over to the table so I can show you what you need and how to make it. Alrighty, oh, camera is not centered. All right, that's better. So you guys can see my table and see my examples. Um, in the title or description, you'll see that it says DDA Triglia Can Portraits. And that is the contemporary French artist that we are basing this artwork off of today. So if you are so inclined, you can Google him to see his work and see and maybe get a little inspiration about how you want to complete yours. So in order to do this project, you will need cardboard and it doesn't matter what size any size works but I found that working a little smaller because you want to fill up this whole um, canvas really is the best option to go um, go with so work a little smaller it can be this size as long as your can can fit on there and you can draw around it it's a perfect size you'll also want to have some construction paper or some kind of colored paper for your background to cover up the cardboard you will need a can or two and some things to draw with and decorate your background. I used a lot of puffy paint, so these kinds of things here. If you don't have those, you don't need to go out and get them. You can decorate with crayons, markers, whatever you have at home. And the way that we get the can to stick to the board is with hot glue. So you'll also need that. And let's actually get started so the first part of this project is crushing your can and you can see here that I have a few that are crushed already and during this process you want to be um, conscious of how you're crushing your can so before you go out and stump on it because that's what you need to do you can bend it so I'm going to just take my hands and kind of bend this so I can control which way the bottom and the top goes. You can bend this so that the top comes down and the bottom and the top are all on top like this. And you can decorate um, your project like this. Is my other? Yeah. Okay. So you can do it like this or you can do it where one of them is in the front and the other is in the back. So you can have a different kind of feel. But make your decision now. And if you want them both in the front, then you are going to bend this the top toward you and then bend the bottom up toward you and I will not show you the stumping part because you will need to go outside and get on some concrete or something and stump these out and make sure you have on thick soled shoes no crocs no flip-flops you need something with a solid sole so that you do not hurt yourself but I would highly suggest going outside to stump on this because um, if your parents are like mine they're like don't be stumping in my house so don't do it in the house Take a minute, go outside, stump your can flat and um, do it on concrete, like on the sidewalk so that your can gets a little scratched up because that helps the hot glue stick to the cardboard and your can. So once you have your can all flattened, you will take your cardboard and your piece of paper and you will glue it on. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue um, I might need a glue stick. How about that? A little bit of glue in each of the corners. And then I'll stick my paper on top. And fold the edges back because my paper is bigger than my cardboard. So I'm going to stick it on like that. Flip this over. It's not really centered, but that is okay. And fold these back. And this is a little tip that you get when you watch the video. It's not in the captions, but I like to cut these corners. That way I won't get this weird bulkiness here that I have to deal with. And it looks uneven and a little sloppy from the front. When you cut the corner like that, you get a clean feel on the back and a really clean corner on the front. So... 
It's not super necessary, but it is helpful. And this side over here is so narrow. I'm just going to leave it, but I will trim the corners and maybe tape it down later, but I'm not super worried about it. And hopefully you have somewhere to toss your trash. I have a little trash can near me and I'm going to put a little hot glue on my paper and if you have Elmer's glue that will work for this step too it doesn't have to be hot glue but since I'm already using it just continue work smarter not harder alrighty now I'm going to fold my paper press it down press it down and do the last side press it down all right so now I have my covered cardboard uh, because I'm a little anal that is gonna bother me so I'm gonna grab some tape over here I should have paid attention so don't be like me okay got a little tape I'm gonna peel that up and tape this side down so I'm only doing this because I wasn't paying attention to how I glued my paper onto my cardboard. So be better than me. Pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Okay. There we go. Alrighty. So we have our board covered. And now the pretty much the last step that I really need to tell you about is gluing this um can to the board because after that it's all decorating you can draw and do whatever you want but you want to make sure that your can was stumped on the ground like on some concrete so you can get these little dimples and a little um just a little scruffed up because those scratches allow the hot glue to adhere to the um metal which it usually doesn't do too well so just putting hot glue on the back of my can. And you may need an extra stick like I do. Because I want to make sure it stays on my board and does not fall off. But you also need to work quickly with this. Okay, flip it over. And you can place it anywhere, but I'm going to place mine like right in the middle because... That's kind of what I like. All right. So now you have the base for all of this. And um, you really don't need your hot glue gun anymore. So I'm going to unplug mine. So I don't forget and leave it on all night. All righty. And now we're just going to decorate this. If you um, are taking some time to look at the examples on Google of DDA Triglia's work, you'll notice that he does like a border around his in a fun way, an interesting way, and then fills it in with um, little fun doodles. So that's kind of what we're going to do right now. I'm going to clear some stuff off so have some space. I'm going to use crayons and markers for this. If you have puffy paint or acrylic cr paint, that will work well. You'll be able to um, paint over the can. But I am going to use my crayons and my markers to really focus on the background first. And then I'll come and maybe put some paint on the actual can. So let me grab my chair. Here we go. Okay. So I am really just freestyling this design. You can pl plan it out if you want to. I'm going to start by making some ornamentation in the corners and I'm going to do triangles. And they're going to be different colors. The artwork um, that I'm basing this off of is very vibrant and colorful. So I would definitely suggest using a lot of colors. Do not be afraid of color. Take your time and really have fun with it. Okay. So we got 
triangles over there. And this one, I'm going to give it kind of a wavy line, but it's still going to be a triangular shape. I don't have a purple marker. Hmm. Miss Rachel got to do better, huh? Okay. And that one is dried out. So let's go over to the crayons. Got a purple crayon. And if you use hot glue like me, then you may have some texture under your corners, like where you put the hot glue. That'll just add a fun little extra dimension to your drawing. Okay, and now I'm going to connect these so that I have a continuous border all the way around. Let's use some red. And your lines don't have to be straight lines. They can be um, any kind of lines that you want them to be. So let me show you. I'll start out with a straight-ish line over here. Then I'll do, I like to call that the castle line. Um, how about a zigzag over here? And then a wavy line at the top. So hopefully you are following along and you are creating your own designs. And remember that we would love to see what you are working on as you're doing our cap at home projects, you can post them on social media and make sure you tag us. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and you can even watch our videos on YouTube just in case you don't have um, Instagram or Facebook. So we are Cap Detroit. It's usually pretty easy to find us. And in the comments, let me know what you think about DDA Triglia's work. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Is there something you would do differently? Did you see what he did and get inspired to try something kind of weird out with some recycled materials? Let me know in the comments. You can also let me know if there are some steps that you need me to go over because I can help you out. I will respond. Or if you just want to say hi, that's also a thing you can do. We'd love to hear from you guys. So now I'm just going to start doing some weird squiggly doodles. He has a couple of pieces where the doodles look like faces, which is kind of what um, I tried to go for in this area, like an abstract face. And I did that with a pen. So um, if you have, you know, a ballpoint pen or something where you can get a different size line, then you can use that. So I have this pen and I will, hmm, let's do like an eyeball over here. But then we'll do another one over here. And maybe so that it's not like an actual face, I'll do a mouth in the middle instead of a nose. With some teeth. And then I'll do a nose little squiggle right here. So it can be really abstract. That's not an actual face. It has the parts, but it looks pretty funky. So I would definitely encourage you to just have fun with this. Make it weird. Make it interesting. And fill up your entire workspace. Don't be afraid of making mistakes because sometimes that's what working on some art is about just being free okay so it will take me a long time to fill up this entire with design
I think you get the gist of it because you're intelligent people. And I'll just start to show you what I do with the um, puffy paint. So with the puff paint, this stuff lasts a really long time. So if you have some, I'm pretty sure this is like 20, 15 years old or something like that. Because <laughs> I brought it from my mom's house. So it is pretty old, but because I've kept the cap on and I've kept it stored in a um, cool dry place, it still works. And you can just kind of do the same thing that you would do with your markers or crayons on the paper on the actual can. So if you want this to be a portrait, then think about that first. And you'll want to plan it out. Where will your eyes be? Will you have a mouth and a nose? Um, are you going to use part of the can to represent part of the face? Or is that just going to be kind of a random thing that you have going on? And then the face will be down here. So with this, I think I'm going to use this part as the mouth. And then have the eyes here. And then this will be kind of a hair piece or something so I'm not going to start with blue I'll start with pink for the lips and I'll just squeeze it here and this little indentation that um, used to be the bottom of the can so if you squeeze really hard you'll get a thick line like I just did so you'll want to be careful so that you are controlling the paint and the paint isn't controlling you. Okay, so I got that there. And then I think I'm going to fill this in with black. Later on and put details on top of that black. So I'm going to squeeze my paint tube pretty hard now because I want to fill this whole thing in. Alrighty. And I'm not worried about it being completely filled in because I like to have some of the can still showing. So you can look at this and tell it's a can, but then you can also see what I did on top of it. So think about those kinds of things. If you want to completely hide your can and make this something different, then you can do that. You'll take your time. To but that is not what I'm doing here. Um, I wear glasses, so I'm going to put some glasses on this can. And remember, turn your work if you need to, because as I was working on my examples, I kept putting my hand in paint. So remember, turn your work so that you're working comfortably. And I guess I didn't take too good care of that. If you are having trouble with your puffy paint coming out, you can use a safety pin or um, straight pin or something like that to just kind of I have this little straight pin. I'm just going to stick this in here to see if I can unclog it. OK, it looks like it might work now. I'm not going to squeeze hard because I want this line to be. But it seems like I'm not going to get any paint out of here. All right, there we go. Just a little bit, though. So, because that one isn't working, I guess the glasses will be orange. Unless the orange doesn't want to work either. There we go. And you'll want to be careful so that you are controlling your paint. Right now, it seems like my paint is controlling me. Yep, because the orange isn't working either. So let's move on to a different one. See? Okay. So right now I'm just making glasses and maybe later on my other paints will work and I can add the orange on the outside and make a little design.
Probably not. Because my paint just wants to make a fool out of me today. I'm going to take my pen and see if I can encourage some paint to come out. All right, that might be the end of that one. So I've added some designs here. One thing I did notice about working with the puffy paint is if you are going to put paint on top of paint, you will need to allow for drying time because this will need to dry before I put teeth or anything else on top of it. So make sure you um, think about that when you are planning your design. There we go. We have a circle for the eyes. And I'm going to let that dry because this is kind of expanding as it dries. And once it dries, I'll go back in and put a pupil in there, just a little dot to mark the middle of the eye. And let's see. This is glitter glue. It's not actually puffy paint, but pretty easy to get your hands on this now because they already have Christmas stuff out and that's kind of where you find it at the Dollar Tree. Okay, see if we can get some of this out. And you can even put the paint on the um, board too. It doesn't have to all be on the can. So remember when you're doing this, you'll want to take your time because this puffy paint can be kind of finicky as you can see. Turn this around. And I like working with the puffy paint because it is a little less messy than acrylic because you don't need a paintbrush and water and all of that. But if you have decided to work with acrylic paint, if you have that at home, make sure that your work area is covered so that you don't get paint on your table or um, whatever you're working on. Make sure you have water and paper towel so you can clean your paintbrush. And there we go. Going around that edge. So I'm going to see if I can go around these glasses. Another thing about this puffy paint is sometimes you can kind of just scrape it off before it dries. And I will take a tiny piece of paper towel and see if I can do that. Or see if I'm going to make a mess. Let's see. So I got some of it off. It will probably work better if you have like a q-tip or um, even a toothpick but I'm gonna put some glitter glue over here there we go so whatever you end up doing with this project make sure you're having fun because that's really what this whole thing is about. So like I said a little earlier, if you do this project and you have something that you want to show us, you can leave us a picture in the comment area. You can also let me know if um, there's something else you want me to explain a little more. And thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, this is not our final project because you really want to fit fill that entire space up so try to fill up your entire board like this you have plenty of time go ahead and take some time out and just relax and kind of doodle thank you so much for joining me at cap at home i'm miss rachel we made can art today have a great weekend bye